Hello my people, welcome back to my channel. I am Cindy B and this is Real Life with Cindy B Reactions and More. I am on the bike today and it's workout time. So you know the drill. You will see this day then you will see this video the day after. You will see this video the day after this ride. That's the way I do it. You'll see the video. Today's video. You'll see it tomorrow. <clears throat> so the time right now is 1.56. So I'm getting to the bike early today. That's what I'm doing. I'm working up to getting to the bike uh, in the morning. Around 10. Maybe 11 to uh, record the video for the next day. So anyway, it's a cold day here in Dallas and uh, I had to turn the heat on which brought the smell of weed all throughout the unit. I've been outside for my fresh air. I've been in here with my doors and windows wide open. I just closed it. The windows are still open. I just closed the curtains for the video because it's bad for the video if the uh, sunlight is behind you. So here I am. And it's pre pre walk around the neighborhood, pre stair climb, and all that stuff. Got my blood pressure pill in me. Got my. Uh, daily dose of asthma medicine and uh, so far not needing the rescue inhaler got the floors mopped and I got them swept and vacuumed why well, swept and vacuumed because there are certain carpets that I just sweep onto the uh, bare floor and then I vacuum the bare floor I don't want to mess up my carpets. Uh, this one in here can take the vacuum cleaner and I rather enjoy vacuuming it all the time. I just make sure I don't uh, vacuum the edges. Whether you buy things cheap or expensive you need to take care of your stuff. So you will see a duster. Not a duster. It's a I just make names up for stuff. You will see a um, on my Amazon wish list. You will see a sweeper. I think it's called a sweeper. Uh, costs about twenty dollars, maybe twenty five dollars. I put that on my list because that's what I plan on using on all of my carpets to uh, take care of them and use those on because you can use those on the carpets and you can use those on the floor. And my neighbor had one, and I saw him dumping it. He was like, you remember these? And I have always loved them. Back when I lived at the Dallas Life Foundation, and we had, they would assign us chores. I remember um, one of the things I liked to do was I used, I liked to use that sweeper. I was amazed at how much stuff that sweeper would pick up. I was just amazed at how much it did a better job than a vacuum cleaner. And I was always like, where's the sweeper? Somebody else got it. Where's the sweeper? It's out. Somebody else got it. <laughs> it was hard to get your hands on the sweeper because the sweeper, it was so much fun to use. And it was just amazing how much crap it would pick up. So, yeah. I was thinking about, you know, talking about the chores at the Dallas Life Foundation, um, uh, there would be different jobs that they would assign you um, as you advanced in levels going through the, I think it what was it, the discipleship program or whatever it was. And I made it to, um, I got to work security, which I did not like. And uh, I, I still wanted out of that because you work security inside a <laughs> inside a homeless shelter, and that's a quick way to make enemies. People will hate you 
with a passion. <laughs> you know, and you're just doing your job. And uh, you doing your job keeps you in the program, keeps you at the shelter. And um, them, everybody else not breaking any rules, keeps them in the program and keeps them at the shelter. So I don't know what you're bad about. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but I used to be sitting there. Ooh, I used to be sitting there, you know, just sweating bullets. I was like, I ain't doing nothing but my job. Why would they assign somebody this? Uh, just making enemies. I'm just trying to get through the program, trying to get my out. So then from there, I um, worked as floor supervisor. They had a clothing section down in the basement. We used to go down there and shop for free. We were allowed a certain amount of uh, items and uh, certain times a month we could go and they would take us down in groups and allow us a certain amount of time and uh, then we would go to the checkout and they would check off you got a certain amount of bras, certain amount of this, certain amount of that and bag it up and we'd go up, back upstairs and sometimes we would swap stuff. <laughs> so sometimes, oh, I love that. Can I have that? Give me this. I was like, so yeah, sometimes we would do stuff like that. So, you know, the Dallas Life Foundation for me was a really good experience. Third time was a charm. <laughs> they were one day I was in and out of these places. I was in and out. The third time at the Dallas Life Foundation was a charm, and I actually graduated. I had the little hat on it, and everything. I was like, really? Y'all got us graduating from a... <laughs> and it felt like the most ridiculous thing. Um, but yeah, anyway. So, it... It changed me in a whole lot of ways. It really did. Because we had to study the Bible, and we had to uh, attend chapel service. Um, we, and it was, chapel I believe was every night we had to go. Um, I think it was every night. And then we had to recite. We had to memorize stuff and go into this dude's office. I can't remember what he his title was. Go into his office and recite it. So they tested us on what we were studying. And so uh, a lot of that's how I was able, I can't quote anything from the Bible today, but back in the day when I was at the Dallas Life Foundation, I could quote the Bible just like that. Really good. I could, I could tell you where to find it. <laughs> all gone from me but um everything in your life changes when you start studying the Bible um, because you can really see the devil coming at you you can really see the devil coming at you and you know you know in the moment exactly what's going down but anyway what I was gonna say was after I finished with security, then I became floor supervisor. That brought me a whole new set of enemies. <laughs> it was just my job, a temporary assignment. But the reason I told you the story about the clothing and the supervisor position was because um, because we got to shop down in the basement. I was always sharp. <laughs> I was always sharp. At um, at the shelter, and a lot of people thought I worked there. And then when my assignment became to work as supervisor, floor supervisor, uh, when they gave me that assignment, people didn't listen to me. Uh, <laughs> I guess they thought I was a pushover or something, and I called them on everything. You know how you get mad when you get a position? And it's like, ah, 
when this person had the position, just like that, y'all did what y'all were supposed to do. They gave me the position, and they were like, well, you ain't nobody. You ain't nobody. You ain't nobody. <laughs> and it's trying to mess with me. But I was like, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to report you appropriately. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it'll be taken care of. And the next thing you know, she had something like a gold badge. They would have a gold badge member, a staff member, all up in their face. Um, telling them that they will do what it is they're supposed to do. So I made enemies in that position too. But um, I was hoping, when I loved being floor supervisor, I really did. Um, I pulled out my nicest clothes. <laughs> I was sharp all the time, but I still pulled out my nicest clothes um, for my shift. I remember the program manager had told me, this was long before I even got there, it was a sign that she said that uh, I had changed a lot. I had changed a whole lot from when I first walked through the door. And that was true. It, it was true because when I first walked through the door, I was fearful and my guard was up and, you know, I was ready to... Uh, out of my business. <laughs> I came in full of fear. I was like, I don't know who these crazy people are. And uh, I came in mad too because, you know, everything that you have has to go through this cleaning process and a lot of stuff gets damaged. And uh, they were very strict. At the Dallas Life Foundation is what they were. And the third time around, um, I did not enter the door with any, holding any fear. I just entered saying, here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. Same staff members, but you know. All these people with all their BS. So I managed to uh, stay on track, is what I managed to do. Stay on track. We got through to graduation, but I did not get the apartment. I told you the story why I didn't get the apartment. Although, um, the program manager allowed me to take a job that would have me off the premises overnight. She allowed it. And she allowed it with a lot of people that worked for this particular uh, company. But when it came time for the housing, they told me because I did not live permanently, full-time, on the premises that I could not have my housing. Even though I had been given permission <coughs> to um, be off the premises a certain amount of times, a certain amount of days per week. So, Me being one of those people who didn't want to wear the cap and gown and go through the graduation, I tried to get out of it. And I was told that if I did not, then I would not receive my housing. And so I, you know, went through the ridiculous graduation. What I consider to be a ridiculous graduation. It's like all the things you're going to graduate from in your life, you're going to graduate from, you know, this discipleship program at the uh, homeless shelter. And 
So I went ahead and I did it. I went ahead and I did it, but uh, because I didn't want to lose my housing. And it turns out they didn't give me my housing anyway. And you know what I had to say? I said I had to go through that ridiculous graduation anyway, and I still didn't get the house. <laughs> I was more mad that I had to go through the graduation with the cap and the gown and not get the housing than I was um, about not getting the housing on a technicality. All right. If program manager allows you and there are certain rules that you have to follow by checking in and doing this and doing that and you do all that stuff, you should still get your housing. So I didn't get my housing. And, uh, yeah. That led me to um, another shelter. Is what it led to. So I think I went <clears throat> in the shelter that I finally got the housing from. Uh, it was three times there too. Three times there too, and then there was the Salvation Army and the Austin Street Shelter. They saw me several times, um, but never for long periods of time. And there was the Center for all, all of those. Yeah. So anyway, back at the uh, Dallas Life Foundation, I was hoping that that supervisor, because um, some people that work the program at the uh, shelter, some of them became employees. And I was hoping to become, when I worked the kitchen, and made some changes in that. Um, people took notice to what I brought to it when I work as a supervisor. Um, I think they liked what I was doing there. The um, program manager spoke to me about you know stuff, uh, and uh, I just grew as a person at that place and I was hoping to get a position there. Hoping to get a position there. As one of the supervisors. So. But anyway, just didn't happen. Did not have no regrets because I would not have wanted to be there doing C19 any damn way. That's all I had to say on that. I'm working out at a tension of six. Hard to believe of 19 minutes and 31 seconds it took. Uh, last night I slept so good. I woke up twice. I woke up around f a quarter to four, quarter to five in the morning, and then I woke up again around seven thirty. Oh, boy, was I out! I, mean, I told you that pill, that the allergy medication knocked me out.
So I definitely woke up well rested. I'm going to take another one today. <laughs> I'm going to take another one today. <sighs> yeah, I woke up feeling good. And uh, just slept through all the BS that, that happens here. In America's test kitchens. I most certainly did. And it was my plan to when I laid down last night to upload my uh, biking video so that it would premiere on the 26th at uh, 7 30 p.m. And when I, I went in there with the computer, but I never did upload it. I uploaded it this morning. When I uploaded it this morning, I said, well, you might as well go ahead and take your ride. That's going to premiere on the uh, 27th in the morning. So that's why I am here at 2.17 p.m. March 26th recording. March 27th's ride. Yeah, I started to take something out of the freezer I did to cook. And now that I'm thinking about it, now that I'm thinking about it, I might take something out of the freezer to cook with this uh, other thing that I'm going to be cooking for the first time today from scratch. I might. It might pair better with it, but I kind of have my mind uh, or my mouth set for something else. <clears throat> but first I'm going to start with the tea. Have a nice, hot, relaxing cup of tea, and then I'll figure out which way I want to go. So it is March 26th, and my birthday is March 31st. My cash app has been cold, 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 cold. And uh, although a lot of gifts poured in, they poured in from two people, and the bulk of them came from one person. So for all you people sitting back talking about, we all done a lot for your birthday. No, you didn't. Two people. Two people. Went above and beyond. <laughs> y'all ain't done <laughs> I do thank the six people who sent me cash apps. Though. I'm not overlooking you, the six people that sent me cash apps. But you think that if you have over a thousand subscribers and 12 of them are watching your videos <laughs> you get a few more cash apps than, than I have received that's just what you would think so anyway my Amazon wish list link you will find that everywhere and you also find my cash app everywhere Pull a, little, pull a little cold cash in. I said, we, we ain't gonna make it possible for you to do no Dollar Tree. Oh, yeah, have your birthday wish? You wanna be able to do a Dollar Tree haul? Huh? <laughs> Not if I got anything to say about it. Uh, okay. Ooh, Lord. <sighs> you have your ways to say F you said to me, and I got my ways to say F you. <laughs> to you as well. <laughs> It is what it is. <sighs> Just know this. Whatever uh, amount of respect and compassion you hold for me, that's what I hold for you. Plain and simple. If you, whatever amount of respect and compassion you hold for me, that's what I hold for you. So, uh, 
But that's it. You should know where we stand with each other. My words about you and to you will never be more kind than your words are about me or to me. That's just the way it goes. Anybody who has been watching my channel should know that. I know everybody back at the Dallas Life Foundation, the Center of Hope, the Bridge, Austin Street Shelter. <laughs> I know everybody back at all those places knows that. You two, you, you people here on YouTube should know it as well. Because I have never showed you anything greater or anything lesser than I showed the people at all those places that used to be my home. That may well one day be my home again. Particularly if this, these channels don't get off the ground because they don't guarantee that these programs that house all of us will always be in operation. So, it is what it is. Okay. I'm so tired of these drug fumes. And I still, I'm still not at 30 minutes. Today is one of those days where I'm like, you know, you climb on the bike and after 35 seconds you're like, it, it is the time up yet? <sighs> I would like to be sitting here with the door wide open. <laughs> I ain't got time for all the stray cats and stuff to be coming in. Uh, you hear my my uh, post nasal drip? It's ready to drop, and I might dash off real quick to just spit it out. <laughs> Trying to hold it back. <laughs> trying to hold it back. So here I am. It's a shame what's happening in the world today. Everything that's happening all around the world. State of the world, we're in a mess, is what we're in. No wonder people focus so hard on the ridiculous things that are happening on YouTube. Because if you stop, Think about everything that's happening around the world. You cry rivers if you stopped to think about everything that's happening around the world. That's all I got to say on that. I guess if you want to have a good day, don't watch the news. You want to have a good day, don't watch the news. Or stay inside your little bubble. <laughs> That's some sad advice, ain't it? You want to have a good day, don't watch the news, or just stay inside your little bubble. Okay, my distance is 5.66. Who says that? Is it Bee Gees? I don't know why that song popped into my head. Oh no! I was thinking about Hall and Oates and their little war going on at their ages. 
Oh, the slick shady shit going down. I used to love myself some hollow notes back in the day. Back in the day. Hollow notes, air supply. My Joby. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, 30 minutes and 41 seconds. <sighs> Time to upload. <whistles> and then go on. I was supposed to do the floors and then knock that laundry out. Since this is day three, I've been sitting in there. And uh, then go on to breakfast. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this. And then I'm going to... Uh, My butter should be soft. If my butter is soft, then I'll go and make that recipe and start my cooking video. But if it's not soft, then I will do the laundry. Maybe by the time I finish with that, it'll be done. It'll be soft. So let me stop pedaling. And, and uh, 6.09 is the distance traveled. So there you have it. Peace, love, happiness, and all that jazz. I'm out.